warm welcome to everyone uh, to our eighth experience sharing session with uh, Dr. Francois Geis and myself. If we are here, it's uh, uh, under the auspices of uh, the Movement for Immunization Agenda 2030, and it is the first peer learning exercise that is situation analysis. And yes, we have a very important deadline ahead of us. For two weeks, we have been working on completing a situation analysis, and finally, we are just a little over 24 hours to the deadline for us to submit the situation analysis. And, you know, just to, as a reminder, that deadline is 11.59 uh, p.m. Uh, uh, Friday, April 1st, uh, 2022. The time there is Geneva time. And what is going to happen, I'm going to just going to make this, uh, let me just put this 24 hours to make us to be, make it to be more real and more exact is that after 24 hours, if you have submitted your situation analysis in peer grade, you're going to receive three situation analysis of peers that you will review and comment based on your own experience to help them to improve upon their work. You receive the works of three peers and you have up till Friday the 8th of April to complete those three peer reviews. And one thing you have to take note of is, uh, depend on you just as you depend on them to complete their exercise if you don't give reviews you are putting their possibility of going through the exercise in jeopardy so they really depend on you and you also, as well as you depending on them now in um we are going to you know after tomorrow we'll not be accepting any more special analysis so you really have to make the most that's why i said if you have not yet submitted your situation analysis i'd like you to open it in front of you, if you're sitting in front of your computer, open it right now and be working on it while we are here. So you can be listening with one ear and learning from the experience of others and actually improving your situation analysis, working on talking because we want to make this 30 minutes that we have together to count. So it's very important because, and once you, if you don't submit, remember it is a certification requirement for this exercise. It is needed for you to go through with the exercise. So I'm really, if you don't submit, you won't lose your place in the movement. You'll still be considered a part of the family. You'll remain with us, but you will not be able to enjoy that pleasure of doing peer review because I think to me, peer review is a pleasurable exercise. Get, getting into the world of our peers and reading what they are prepared, we learn from them just as we are contributing to, 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 to them, improving their own work. So I'm going to come back to, I want to take the pulse of the group. So my question for you is, and you're going to answer with a yes or a no in the chat. Michael, have you finished and submitted your situation analysis? Please, can you type a yes or a no in the chat? I just want to take the pulse of the group just so I say I'm done. Okay, thank you, Malemi, for starting with a no. Okay, and, and Dayo, Mary Goriti Otieno, no. Oh, Olivia Silai, yes, Taban Nilwa. And I'm glad to see that Taban Nilwa is here today because we are going to, he's going to share his experience with us today. We have a, uh, okay, so a good number of yeses. That is excellent. Thank you for sharing that. So for those who have responded with a no, I'm going to say this again. If you are seated in front of your computer, please open your computer, open your situation analysis and be working on it while we are here. Now I'm going to turn towards our guide on the side, Dr. Francois Gass, to tell us what is a situational analysis all about. While I'll invite uh, Taba Milwa to get ready, to share his screen if he's able to, or if not, I could share his situation analysis on the screen and to uh, 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 for him to share his experience with Osa. Well, welcome to you, Francois, and over to you. Thank you, Charlotte, and hello to everyone who are on the call today. I know you're getting close to the deadline to write, but I think you can still do it. And let me summarize and, you know, make sure you keep it simple. Don't go into a lot of... Uh, text sentences, try to go straight to the point, even in a bullet form. If it's very well written, very specific, it may help you, a list of bullets, to, to answer the, the model that have been given. So, you know, what, what, I think situation analysis is a, big, uh, is a big name. In fact, you all have a goal and you may face problem to reach your goal. And then your situation analysis is the next step to identify uh, what is the major challenge that you are facing in your local environment that, if resolved, 
you would make a difference to achieve a progress toward your goal. This is extremely important to review your situation because you may have few challenges. Some challenges are minimal, can be easily solved, and some may represent something important. And of course, when you look at your challenge, you need to be sure that something you can address and maybe hope to resolve with your resources locally available or minimal resources. When you address your challenge, when you describe your challenge that is written in the text, it has to be as specific as possible. You know, a challenge has a weight and you have indicators to assess the weight of the challenge. Is it 20% of your problem? Is it you try to reduce by half the number of vaccine hesitant compared to what you know today? You need to be extremely specific on where is it located? Uh, you know, who is concerned by the challenge, why there is this uh, challenge, and you have to follow the form, and then answer, you know, when we say, what is the question, you may have few questions that you need to answer the, the you know, if you have the answer to those questions, you may be able to tackle your challenge better than you have done so far. So the question are like, why do I have this challenge? You may have several, you could list several challenges and you would choose uh, several reasons and you may choose one or two reasons that are most important to you. And those reasons, you will need to look at it to understand why are those causes so important to get to the root cause. You know, the famous list of why, why and why. And of course, to do that very often, you can, you have some resource that's the data source locally available. We all know that you all have the DHS, a DHS too. You may have some coverage survey. You may have limited survey carried out by some NGOs. Or, and you try to answer the famous questions, you know, uh, why, uh, where is it? Who are is concerned? Why they are concerned by this? Why is this uh, group refuse, have a refuse of vaccination or never go to a vaccination site? and be very cautious when you use data source to really make sure if it's a offer of services or if a demand of services. Very often we say it's a problem of demand, mothers don't come, but you need to have the evidence that the service are occurring, the outreach are taking place. And when you look at where you look at data, you may find that few localities really have this problem, but not all localities. Now, of course, your, your next step is to find out maybe more information than you have today to, to tackle the corrective action for your challenge. So you will have, maybe your next step is not actionable steps as it is written, but it may be to look for more information, you know, interviewing key informants or visiting some health facility to understand better if outreach are taking place, what are the real problem to, is it uh, the delivery of vaccine or is it really they go, but mothers don't come for X reasons and you need to understand interviewing mothers. So your next step is not automatically actions to, to resolve the problem, but it could be actions to understand better the problem, but it be limited. It's not a research issue. It's just a programmatic, concrete, pragmatic. You need to maybe interview a few women, interview two health centers to find what's going on. So over to you, Charlotte, and looking forward to hear one or two uh, which have been deposited to, to the peer grade. Thank you. Thank you very much, Francois. And I'm inviting Taban Milwa to unmute. I'm trying to keep a promise uh, that I made to you during our last uh, session that you uh, present your situation analysis today. So uh, Taban uh, Milwa, are you able to share? are you able to share your screen or should I do that for you? Yeah, I, I think, uh, good morning, everyone. You can be able to share for me. Okay, uh, that's yeah. great. And please, can you start by introducing yourself, telling us who you are and what you do? Yeah, uh, uh, thank you, uh, host. I greet everyone in the house. By name, I'm called Taban Ayub. Uh, initially, I've been working as a immunization consultant for UNICEF but my contract ended in December last year. So up to now I've not yet uh, got a job. I'm still searching for... Uh, for job opportunity. I hope you can hear me. 
Hello. Mm. Yes, we can hear you. Okay, yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, <clears throat> yes, uh, in my situation analysis, the problem that I have, I've taken one of the county, which is in Greater Capueta. Greater Capueta comprises of four counties. But Mashite analysis is very specific for one county, which is Capueta Source County. Capueta Source County, as of November 2021, it has a cumulative rental credit coverage of 36%. And it also has a dropout rate of 31 to 30%, which is as high as three times the standard recommended dropout rate. So this is my area of concern that I'm going to discuss with the team as well. Now, you can see here, as I said, my problem, my challenge. Hi. Hello? Charlotte, just your screen is... I can't see the... No. Presentation. Uh, maybe Charlotte has a connection problem. Uh, can you explain uh, while Charlotte will re? Okay, I think it's fine. Yeah, as I said, my major concern is the uh, low vaccination uptake in Capoeira source, and the. Uh, Okay, thank you so much. Uh, okay. And then the high well, can you move down? Uh, can drop move out down? rate in cup. Yeah, go ahead. What, what I've realized as the main factor in this particular county, the about this county, this is a community that is uh, most of the community are nomad. The entire depends on pastoralists. They could move from one place to another, searching for pastures land. So when you look at the key issues, as I've been working on the ground, what I've realized Continue. Uh, Charlotte has connectivity issue. Continue. Uh, Uh, Charlotte, can you uh, go down to part two? Yeah. Depends on your style. I don't know if you have engaged. Okay. Yeah. The demand for vaccination is very, very low. Linking of so so go down, uh, Charlotte. If to see if there is more cause mention. Okay, okay, that's good. Twenty three, and I three times. Of course. Yeah, the committee members don't have fixed homes. They move around seasonality. Go down it a bit. Pastor, it seems as if we have lost uh, Tab One uh, because of connectivity issues as well. So he's no more in the room. No, but I think what you see written is an interesting. Uh, I think the the that the you know the situation where he explained. Uh, because yeah, I think the overall he has put the real data. What he had described uh, uh, go down the key finding maybe. Yeah, uh, I've been beyond down. Uh, okay, uh, he's get, now he's going into the specific cause and addressing that his main problem is accessibility uh, and maybe utilization of services low due to this contributing and is listing factors, inadequate awareness, irregular movement patterns, how to, uh, the country focus on campaign, and less attention routine, uh, reviewing and increase human resources, 
Okay, I think uh, you know what what's important is that all the I think uh, he described very well a low a low coverage and the dropout in the and he identified the localities that suffer most. Excuse me, one second. Estoy ocupado. Please, if you also want to share your submit your situation analysis that you have already submitted in peer grade, please don't hesitate to raise your hand uh, but, so that uh, we can invite you to do so. What you know? What I think what's important and for him to consider is to make sure to give some information on the offer of services. We know it's a very difficult area. We cannot just accuse the population not to come, but we need to have evidence and quantified evidence on what, what are, is it a problem of service delivery? And if it's a problem, he has started explaining why and has the outreach taking place or is there not taking place, why? Or they take place, but the community has other priority. So uh, even if you have a dropout, make sure that the service is good because if you go once, you will have a lot of Penta one. If you never come back, your dropout will be high. So before accusing mothers, we need to be sure, or population, we need to be sure that you have evidence that your outreach are taking place as planned and they are of the quality expected. If they are, then your problem becomes more the demand and addressing the issue of difficult utilization by families. So be very clear. And when you look at the cause, make sure you identify the main cause and you try to make a way to the cause because that will help you to do better, not solve everything, but make a difference. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Francois. And I see Taban Milwa is uh, back with us. Taban, I don't know if you're able to speak. I also noticed some comments in the chat from Jores and uh, Mohamed Wazir that are in line with what you just said, Francois, about dropouts. Yeah, I'm with you. I can speak. Okay. So, uh, 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 are you able? Did you hear uh, the questionings uh, that uh, Francois brought I, up? I, I did not hear him well. It was breaking. I had with my connection down here. Okay, yes, I noticed that. I'm really sorry about okay. that. And I understand you because I'm facing the same challenges. So what I would do is um, that you just take a look at the comments that have been left in the chat by Jores, uh, by Jores and Mohamed Wazir concerning dropout and uh, um, answer this one question. In terms of your next steps, what do you propose in terms of concrete actions that you will take? in order to either to get more information concerning your situation or in order to solve the challenge? Yeah, I think one of my actionable, uh, what I can do, what I want to tackle these two issues, low coverage and uh, high dropout rate. When you look at the dropout rate, because as I said, we have 50% of children who have been reached with Penta 3 and 37% has reached by Penta no, 50% with Penta 1 and 37% with Penta 3. So ideally, we're supposed to have 50% Penta 1 and maybe probably 50 or 49% Penta up to 10, which is the standard as required. So we realize, yes, there's a gap here. As I said earlier, there's limited community awareness. Mothers who come for Penta 1 tends not to come to Penta Unfortunately, uh, we are not able to and hear Taban. Uh, Though they are really and they are giving kind of well. You can't hear me? No, yes. Okay, we can hear you now. Oh, I don't know where it is. Yeah, what I was saying, I don't know where you have stopped hearing me, but what I was saying exactly. My action is to tackle these two issues, low penta coverage and high drop rate. In my presentation, you have made it very clear, capoeira center 37%. Ideally, we're supposed to have penta three almost together with penta one. Even if that's different, at least it would be less than or equal to 10%. Now, 
what we realized, as I said, is the gap in the community awareness. Mothers are well informed at the facility when they come for Penta 1 about the return day for Penta. Disappear again. <coughs> Okay. It is also clearly indicated in the child health card when. Uh, but uh, uh, Taban, unfortunately, we have lost you. But I wanted to ask: so when they don't come, if the mothers don't come back, even though it's written in the child's health card that they are to come back for pentatree, if they don't come back, what does what do the health workers do to get those mothers to come back? What have they tried to do? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, now yes. Go ahead, Taban. Okay, thank you. I don't know if it's my network or what is exactly happening. It's your network. <laughs> oh, 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 my God. Anyway, but it's, I think we have a, an idea, even though there are, you can look at the question. There's a question from Syed Mirabancha in the chat. Can you just type your, your response in the chat and then I'll read it out if uh, uh, you're having issues of connectivity. So can you just type, there's a question from Syed Mirabancha that says, what are the most productive strategies you will plan? You plan to tackle the challenges you are facing in your country or in your context about you know the high dropout rate Okay, yeah, what I was saying, my... So Taban, please, can you answer the questions in the chat so that we, will move, we, we can move forward? I think, uh, yes, that's better, but maybe an overall... Uh, I think Taban understand very well the context in which there is a dropout uh, and a low Penta 3 coverage and still not a very high Penta 1 coverage. And I, I think he has some strategy listed, but I think, you know, he has listed the ideal strategy, which you would like that would do a difference. But, you know, you always need to make a priorities and to focus on strategies. And that was one of the questions on the chat. And the second thing is to be sure, you know, uh, a dropout to understand, he said, the dropout. And that's maybe the first uh, issue that he should tackle because they have come once, but they are not coming back. But you need to be absolutely yeah. sure that the, yeah. the vaccine came back. So you may find data in the DHS knowing how outreach taken place as planned at the time it was planned. If yes, then you, you understand that the community has access but for other reasons, they may not come. And then it helps you to focus on the real cause of the problem of the dropout. So make sure that service offering is of good, decent quality. Then outreach quality is another issue. Make sure the outreach are in quality. Sometimes they, they don't come on the time plan. The population will go and do their work because they expected and they didn't come. So make sure that you really analyze the cause of your dropout, the why of the why of the why, as we say, to identify the, the root cause that will help you to find uh, solutions in the future. But maybe your next step is more to understand better the cause, to prioritize the cause, and then address maybe one or two corrective measures that could make a difference. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Francois. And more questions are dropping in the chat for, 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 for Taban. I also wanted to ask Taban, I see he has not uh, 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 referred to any idea from the IDS engine. So I wanted to find out from him if he was able to check in, in the IDS engine to see whether there were any ideas that could help him in uh, tackling this issue. So Taban, as I said earlier, if you could just, uh, uh, if you could please uh, respond in the chat that way we are certain that uh, everyone in the room will be able to hear uh, or to, to read what you have shared. And I'll also uh, uh, be delighted to read it out for, for, for others who are going to watch the recording later on so that they get to have a clear picture of your situation. So I think right now I'm going to be inviting um, uh, others in the room. We can, uh, Francois, I know we have just uh, about uh, six minutes left for our, um, for our session, but I think we can take one uh, another uh, uh, situation analysis before we separate. 
Yes, please. All right. So uh, I see um, there is a hand that is raised. Uh, okay, from uh, uh, Dr. Ndayo Iwat. Uh, Ndayo, uh, please go ahead and unmute yourself. Okay. Thank you, Charlotte. I thank you, co host. Thank you, everybody else. So I've got to uh, present um, my situation analysis that I've already submitted about two hours ago. Are you uh, able to share your screen? Uh, let me see that. Probably you have to go off your screen. Let me make an attempt. Okay. Okay. I think. Uh, yeah, is by I'm sharing my screen now. Is it visible? Yes, it's visible. Thank you. Okay, so um, I'm presenting from Abuja. I'm in that you what I've been on the immunization uh, landscape since 1996, and um, at the moment I'm with the federal capital territory Abuja, Nigeria, and um, I'm at the uh, apex of the coordination and. Um, uh, planning and uh, you know implementation of all immigration activities in the federal capital territory of, of Nigeria. And uh, Charlotte and others, I want you to know that I've reached 60 years of age uh, this month and uh, I'm pulling out of, from the civil service in Nigeria. So I'll, I'll be operating consultancy on primary health care and immunization uh, services in the country and even globally. So thank you very much. So I'm um, looking at this uh, template and uh, uh, my problem is on the supply side that the major challenge I have here is a uh, low availability of primary healthcare immunization services at primary healthcare facilities in area council is our local government like district and the assist of them in the federal capital territory. Uh, this problem I know cuts across the whole area councils in the FCT but I'm picking on this one because this is where I'm located, uh, I reside. So um, the key area of focus is on SP13, health workforce, immunization programs for primary health care and universal health coverage. And uh, the question uh, that I'm analyzing my situation is how do I strategize to resolve the low availability of primary health care immunization services at primary care facilities in Puja area council Abuja. And um, uh, to me, sorry. Can you move down, Charlotte? Yes. Okay. So the cover note presenting my analysis, Puja area council by way of location, uh, there is, um, Service physical access challenge. Available data, example, on the 2021 increased supervision report, 2020 infrastructure inventory and personnel audit reports, 2022 district health information management system data. There are major gaps in availability of health and non health personnel in minimum number and mix, as over 80% of the available 45 primary health care facilities are not able to provide the minimum service package of care. Management could recruit volunteers to fill in the human resources gaps with the view to absorb them as fashionable staff in two years. Corporate organizations and individuals could adopt primary health care, sorry, primary health care facilities and ensure primary health care and immunization optimized services provision with infrastructure maintenance and human resources provision and support. Assistant analysis could get council with predicted 2022 population at 403,962, that is from the National Population Commission, uh, has 45 public health primary health care facilities made up of 11 primary health care centers and 34 primary health care clinics. Based on attainment of the minimum number and mix of health and non-health personnel, the capacity to deliver the minimum service package of care is as follows. Two, only two primary health care clinics have one to two personnel and can provide facility-based services only without outreaches. Six primary health care clinics cannot provide both facility and community-based primary health care services as there are no health personnel or there are non-health personnel who can't support services, particularly injectable vaccinations and drugs. Only one primary health care clinic 
as minimum number and mix to support both facility and community based PSC services. Of the 11 PSC centers, seven can provide facility based primary care services, including immunization with no community based services, while four can provide both facility and community based PSC services. Primary health institutions, private health institutions are just four, with two high volume community pharmacies in the area council headquarters. With this level of performance capabilities, the over 400,000 people in Kuje are underserved, while over 80,000 children under five and 16,158 under one babies are not well served with limited available PHC and immunization services. The challenge is therefore the low availability of PHC immunization services at PHC facilities in Kuje Area Council in the Nigeria Federal Capital Territory. This challenge is important as physical access to PHC and immunization activities is limited. The question to answer is, how can I strategize to resolve the low availability of PHC management services at PHC facilities in Kujera Council? The answer to this question will help resolve this challenge as the root causes will be evaluated, prioritized, and specific solutions preferred. So the data sources that I have here, I'm using the current healthcare infrastructure inventory and personal audit report 2020 update by the FCT Primary Healthcare Board. The initial inventory and staff audit were done in 2011 with plans to update data report annually. This has not been done regularly. However, after the first two years, attempts uh, to update occurred only until 2020. This report has to be validated practically to guarantee good quality and stability. Also, I'm relying on the validated integrated supporting supervision reports by the primary health care board. This is a quarterly activity to practically provide support to PSA facilities and community level PSA operations by teams of trained supervisors using approved national checklist. Analysis of data with reports presentation is carried out quarterly at the end of each supervisory visit. The last ISS was done was in 2021 and only a quarter was implemented. Lack of funding was the major challenge. Hence, data used from this source may not be adequate as current performance situation may not be, on, may not be known. However, this source could be useful because it gives details of performance across the integrated service, services landscape. The district health information information system data is another source of data. These data are from the facilities and may not be truly, may not be a true representation of what happens. Entry error, deliberate falsification of data, incomplete data ETC could hamper the reliability of this data. Conduct of data quality assurance is important guarantee good usable data for management decision. My key findings, the most likely answer to the question on my most important challenge would be human resource gaps by number and mix in PHC clinics, where over 80% show one to two personnel per facility, offering only facility-based services with limited scope in the context of minimum service package, including national services provision. The data could be provided, could be improved by filter to physically conduct personal audits for actual situation and location. My next steps uh, include management intervention to improve human resources for health, for primary health care to achieve minimum staffing needs by number and mix, stop gap engagement of volunteers and eventually employing them on a personable basis, maybe two years on volunteering, adopting PHC facilities by corporate organizations and individuals for services optimization and infrastructure maintenance, task shifting, task sharing with multi-task practice Basket tasking could expand scope of service, services available in PCs and facilities. So I searched the references from the idea engine, and I couldn't see one that would uh, be quoted here to support my challenge and my next steps. So that was my brief. Thank you so much for attention, and I welcome observations and comments. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, 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 Dr. Ndayo Iwot, for sharing your situation analysis with us. Uh, I'll just turn straight away towards Francois. Francois. Yes, uh, I think, uh, Ndayo, I, I have to give you my felicitation for this thorough analysis of your situation. Uh, if, uh, if you have uh, any questions, so uh, and, uh, any other, point, please go ahead and type in the chat or raise your hand to speak. Okay, Francois. Yeah, no, I wanted to congratulate for Dayo for his uh, thorough analysis with available source of information and even looking for more information. 
to have a more precise information. And of course, uh, Dario is looking at the health system issue. When you talk about staff, it's health system issue. My question to him, uh, is this LGA within an urban setting or is it in a rural setting of the capital, in the capital yeah. That's my first question. Can you answer in a few more questions? It's suburban, suburban. It's a suburban. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, the next things I noted, you said that there was physical access. How do you define in your context physical access of mothers? When you are suburban, sometimes women use different, don't use the LGA itself, but use neighboring LGAs or neighboring health facilities. Exactly. Exactly. And so your data could be misleading. No? Exactly. Exactly. Okay. So uh and as you said you make an audit it will be important but we realize that you you have made an analysis already of the personnel but this will be your next phase is to see how this personnel works and deliver services where are the gaps so it's quite an interesting next step for you but you know uh, and you have already listed a certain number of uh, strategies and action but we all know that addressing health system issue this personnel is a complex one and dependent on you know many factors uh, above you presenting well and looking at resource constraint etc and alternative my next la last question in semi-urban suburban area you have very yeah, often <laughs> private uh, clinic is this a case in your area? Have you documented how many private clinic and how many private clinic offer the package or the immunization? Is yes. it well known? Yes, yes, I have that. I have that. That is what I mentioned. There are two, four private clinics and then two high volume community pharmacies in the LGA. There are some private clinics. Are, yeah, they, are yeah. they offering vaccination? They are. They are. Yeah, they are. Are they, are they very popular? The, 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 the private pharmacies are offering a COVID-19 vaccination only, whereas the private health facilities, both of them are offering COVID-19 vaccination and routine immunization. Okay, and when you talk about physical access, is it a well spread? Have you managed to, what's your definition of finish physical accept, access in that context? Is it two kilometers, yeah. five kilometers from a health site or seat uh, outreach or? Yes, it includes both out, uh, outreach and then uh, immediate catchment. Cash, That's up to five kilometers from the uh, uh, fixed post. And then we, within the, the catchment, the, the first one kilometer of the catchment. Yes, because uh, it's the physical access. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, your next step, I think, to solve the need of personnel is to, to really show how many activities they can implement. They cannot go, they cannot liberate the health facility to go and do vaccination, but try yes. to really document as much as possible the issue of cynical access and the okay. issue of service and the number of personnel okay. by health facility with the ratios, the, the distancing, et cetera. I think it's yeah. a very interesting okay. information that what you're going to collect okay. and really understanding the size of the, you know, the, the, the problem of the population, the mothers, do they face this is a problem? Do you know area where most mothers don't go for yes. the health facilities? They say you wait too much or it's too far away. Have you documented that or is it an assumption? No, it's not an assumption. It's documented. We have evidence on that. And um, uh, uh, um, adequacy of uh, immunization staff is uh, you could say when you have one or two and none of them can offer uh, injectable uh, uh, vaccines, then uh, that team is, is incomplete. So uh, I, I can now uh, update my sub submission uh, mm -hmm. and include the adequacy of team to, to, mm -hmm. to, 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 to highlight those ones that cannot uh, give uh, injectables, the proportion that cannot give injectables, mm -hmm. so that they cannot go for outreach and they cannot be of help at all, even in the health facility, within the health facility. Mm -hmm. So and the mothers go mm -hmm. out outside the LGA to, to get services in, in the neighboring, either neighboring state or neighboring LGA. Yes. No, yeah, you, see, you think to master very well, congratulations, the situation. Mm, now, yes. my last, my last uh, question is, uh, is it only this LGA facing health resource issue, health staff resource issues, 
or is it a general problem in the capital, federal capital, LGAs? Or is it a particular, and if it's a particular NGA, why? Hmm. Are you disconnected? Uh, Dr. A was please on mute. Oh, okay. Sorry. Does that this resource of person, this issue of resource of staff resource constraint affect only that LGA in the capital city? And if yes, why? No, it affects all. It affects all the six LGS. It affects all the LGA. Yes, there, there are six LGS and we have only achieved 30% of the minimum staffing for all the LGS in the federal capital territory of, of Nigeria. It's a, it's a bad situation. So we, we work mainly with volunteers who are not properly paid and the, the commitment and loyalty cannot be ascertained. But this low human resources affect all LGA in the same way? Or are you yes. focusing because yes. it's your, it affects the yes. same way? Yeah, first the, the, the same way. I'm focusing on this one because now that I'm, I'm, I'm retiring, I will have, uh, I will work here. This is where I'm, go I'm going to do my work and, and complete my assignment on, uh, on this uh, particular subject matter. Uh, thank you. And is a human resource constraint being discussed in certain forum at yes, national have, level? Yes, we have, we, have, we have done much. We have had a private sector uh, forum and there's a, a buy-in already, they, 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 are, they are eager to adopt. So I'm, I'm concluding on the, uh, um, I'm concluding on uh, the, the checklist that the, the private sector would use, because it's going to be the first time it, it will happen. So they, they can now come in and, and support us as well in the area of human resource and then logistics for outreaches for those that are, that are complete teams to go out and do the outreaches for us. I think you address a very good uh, point that in uh, semi-urban urban area, uh, the outreach have been assumed not needed, but it is often very much needed. And of course, it requires human resources, transport and logistics to, to do it. No, I think continue the good work. I think you are on track to Thank at you. least address the problem. I wish we luck, <laughs> but I would leave others to ask questions on the chat room. Thank you. Exactly. Thank you so much, Professor Pratt. Yeah. Thank Sayed. you, Francois. Thank you, uh, Dr. Ewan. Sayed, please, can you go ahead and unmute? Uh, thank you, Charlotte and uh, Francois, uh, uh, for this, and also for the IHF uh, for his uh, comprehensive experience sharing uh, regarding the accessibility. This is a, a great challenge uh, everywhere. Uh, it is not only in their uh, uh, area. Uh, my uh, question is uh, that uh, he suggested that to, to uh, regarding the human resources uh, to uh, deploy it in those areas for the accessibility, increase the accessibility, uh, even in the urban setting or if it is in the rural setting. So why not thinking that uh, to utilize this uh, currently available resources effectively and efficiently, because the sustainability will be issue in uh, in the future, so uh, if you deploy more staff and uh, it requires more financial resources and more uh, uh, human resources and financial resources. And also uh, the second question is the urban, uh, uh, if we see uh, the people or the children are more uh, living in the urban setting instead of a suburban or uh, rural areas, and most children are missed in the urban setting. So uh, uh, the outreach uh, session may be uh, beneficial in the urban setting as well. Our from my side, thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Sayed. Uh, Dr. Iwat, uh, were you able to capture uh, his yes, question? Yes, I want, I, I, I want to respond to that. Uh, I, want, I want to give you additional information. Well, I've, I've obtained uh, uh, approval by the minister to, 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 to recruit 203, uh, on the engine, 203 uh, midwives, uh, community health decision workers, and nurses. Their approval is there, and we have done the interview, and we are presently uh, using them as volunteers, and um, uh, they are going to be 
posted uh, by the end of uh, before the end of April, and uh, the, uh, there is a budget for their pensionable uh, appointment. So after a, a year, they will be they will be absorbed. So that is a very huge uh, achieve, uh, achievement. So while we are doing that, we are uh, uh, getting uh, the volunteers uh, from corporate organizations. That is what I'm telling you. We are developing the checklist so that if we agree on the amount that uh, the corporate organizations would want to inject into uh, supporting outreach uh, services and adopting primary care facilities, then uh, when we advertise, we advertise in real terms, telling pr prospective uh, volunteers, this is how much you'll be paid, and you know this will be the, the, the condition of, of engage, uh, engagement, and there will be uh, like uh, a safety net uh, situation. So uh, with this effort, I believe that uh, in the short term, we should be able to uh, uh, cover most of 50% uh, of the existing gaps. Uh, okay, okay, thank you. And uh, uh, just last question, <laughs> this, uh, the title is uh, the, the situation analysis uh, done, but the title was not there. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Syed, and thank you, Dr. Iwat. Yeah, that's why I actually put up uh, this slide on the screen. That is uh, that, please, as you writing your situation analysis, don't forget to add a title that, is, that summarizes in one sentence with an active verb what you found in your situation analysis. So it's very important uh, 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 well, um, to add that to the situation, the word template, and to the situation analysis before submitting. Well, thank you. Okay, thank you so much. And uh, if I'm, I'm just putting the link to the chat because we are actually uh, out of time. And um, I see Ibrahim Abdullahi Michael, they said Dr. Iwat has said it all and the way forward identify will sure improve vaccine coverage in Nigeria. So there are other comments in the chat that you can have a look at those. So if, if you're having uh, maybe any other uh, uh, issues with, with going about understanding and completing your situation analysis. I shared a link in the chat to a, a list of, uh, of video tutorials that Reda prepared for each part, for each part of the situation analysis, each of the six parts. It will be really good for you to, if you're facing a challenge in any of those parts, to go through that. And if afterwards you're still having any issues with completing the situation analysis, I want to invite you for the technical support session. We'll have um, our last technical support session for this week, just uh, ahead of uh, the deadline for submission of situation analysis tomorrow at, uh, at uh, 1.30 p.m. Geneva time. So I'm sharing the link for you to register for the technical support uh, uh, session uh, tomorrow if uh, you still have any challenge because we really want everyone to meet the deadline and be able to submit their situation analysis. So uh, that said, I'm going to, I think I'll turn to, to Francois I'm going to turn to Francois for uh, uh, the key takeaways, what we are going to uh, retain from today's uh, uh, situation and experience sharing uh, uh, session on situation analysis. And we listened today to uh, uh, Tamban and uh, to Dr. Ewart. Uh, over to you, Francois. Uh, thank you, Charlotte. I think what we, we have learned in that when you describe a challenge, you have to put it in the context of the other challenge you may face to reach high coverage with immunization. And this is important to use indicators, quantified indicators to present your challenge. I think it was very clear in the IWE, uh, the name I always difficult, Dai Iwat, uh, all the details of his, about his challenge and what we knew, he knew based on the information that he has available and he was even going to get some additional information to be more precise. I think what we learn as well is that we should not assume the problem unless we have evidence. The evidence, we all talk about service delivery and using utilization of services. We need to be very cautious that we have evidence that the service are delivered timely, uh, you know, uh, making the physical access accessible. And we've learned also that in town, outreach are needed. 
and that they may be needed in less than two kilometers. Five kilometers is a long way in town, and many of those mothers don't have the resource to take transport. So physical access need to be very well understood by interview of the mothers, for example. We heard that uh, analysis uh, leads to uh, a human resource constraint that may affect many LGAs. And I think we realized that uh, Iwot had already addressed this issue and is already getting a solution. One midwife per 400,000, uh, per 20,000 population is a huge input of, of human resources, and that has to be congratulated for the success. I just hope the 220 are for the LGA and not for the whole capital with the six or seven LGA that I'm not sure if he, he has the precision. But I think use data and look at the cause, specific cause when you don't have human resources, look at it why, because that will help you maybe to more understand how it can be addressed at national, as, a, as it is a health system issue and not just an immunization issue. Uh, you know, you need all the evidence possible to be able to address this problem. And so congratulations for the sharing of your experience and the comment, I think is very useful. Now for those who have not yet deposit, you don't need to go in a lot of detailed uh, pros, make it down to the point, even a list of bullet points on what you what action you will take to get more information is good enough what action you will do to do better because you already know the whole situation is is excellent so these are my my main points be very specific with data on the challenge and on the cause of the challenge to focus on the major cause thank you charlotte over to you Thank you very much, Francois. That's a great way to end uh, today's uh, uh, experience sharing session. And thank you all for being here with us, for sharing your experiences. Now I would like to invite everyone to unmute as we always do. Please go ahead, unmute yourself and give a round of applause for uh, Taba Nidwa and for the Dialogue for sharing their experiences today for all those who have so in the chat. Much. Thank, thank you Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you Thank you so much. 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 Thank you so somebody who might call that you want to be with me i will tell you that i don't have money yeah. i want to see how you behave. <laughs>